Hello Sagittarius, welcome to the channel. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading, and I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you're connecting with on a romantic level. What it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. So this is something that could have happened in the past. This could be current. This could be in the far future as well. And this is for those of you that have been in a relationship, in a situationship. Um, some of you may have also been in, well, in a situation where you've simply exchanged glances. It's happened more than a few times. And you know there's something there, but no one's saying anything. So this is a past life connection, Sag. I have my mystery card here for me. This is a past life card. Sagittarius. The first card we have is the strongest. This is death and rebirth, followed by abundance, mystery, selfhood, betrayal, nourishment, hearth and home, sensuality, and compassion under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. Of course, this is a general love reading. It's not going to resonate for everybody, but if it does resonate, certain parts of it, do take it as it comes. And if it doesn't, then at this point in time, this message is not meant for you. All right. My dear Sagittarius, I want to start over again. Whatever happened in the past was not right. It shouldn't have happened that way. I shouldn't have been like that. At this point in time, I'm wondering why I did what I did and how I could have done it better. And I realize now that I really do want a second chance with you. Going forward, I'm hoping that the road can be smooth. There's no roughness like there was before. Smooth sailing. In this connection, I have found a lot of abundance. I realize that there's so many things, not only materialistic, but so many other things that I've learned from you, I could gain from you. And there's never a lack of. This connection has made me feel more spiritual than I've ever been before. I'm starting to question my own spirituality. I'm starting to think about why is it that you are in my life now? Why not before? Why not far into the future? I have these questions because I feel that there is this unspoken spiritual bond between us. It's as if I can feel your energy. I can hear your thoughts. I can smell your scent when you're not there. Sometimes I even have dreams about you. But do you feel the same? So much distance has been there between us that now I am very intimidated by you. 
I feel that you have now moved on. You are no longer that person that you used to be. You are a better version of yourself. You are a mystery. A mystery now that I have to uncover and it's extremely intimidating because I had you once, but now I have to start over again. And restarting is what is causing me problems. I don't know how to. It's intimidating because now you look and appear as though you're very, very self-reliant, self-sufficient, independent. You don't need anybody and you look a little defensive. And I understand why. Obviously, because of what I did before. But it's hard for me to let go. Because this connection seems to be very spiritual. No matter where I go, no matter what I do, I can't stop thinking about you. And I know that in this connection there has been a sense of betrayal. There has been this feeling of... Who am I? What did I do? You thought you knew me, but you never really knew me at all. There's a lack of faith and a lack of trust. I acted like a stranger. I did certain things that now when I think of, I'm not really proud of, but I want to make things better. With you, I have found the sense of nourishment, this feeling of fulfillment. I feel that you are the complete package, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. And when I think of you, I have these warm, fuzzy thoughts. You are my hearth and home. Wherever you are, that is where my home is. I do feel that there is so much that you have gone through and yet you still put this strong persona I can talk to you about anything and not fear that you're going to judge me. You put your problems aside to accommodate me. This is how loving and how giving and how warm you are. And I realize that now. That I threw that all away by betraying you. Which is why I want a second chance. You are someone who is very sensual. It's hard for me not to think about you in that way. You're very sexy, very gorgeous, good looking, very alluring on so many levels. And I know that you have many choices. A lot of people do like you, but you're different. For me, I like you for different reasons now. Not just the physical, not just because you're always there for me. But because I feel that you and I have had a past life connection together. We have lived together, which is why I feel so connected to you whenever I have thought of or whenever I have looked into your eyes. It's as if I know you. I feel very comfortable with you. Overall, I do feel compassion for you and empathy, and I sympathize with you and your situation. Unfortunately, this is what I got you into, and I've made things from bad to worse. I know you were already in a very soft, vulnerable place back then, but things changed. I took advantage of that, and... 
I do feel compassion for the state that you're in now, which is also why I want a second chance with you. All right, Sagittarius, very strong message. Yeah, this person's realized a few things. Very nice. Um, <clears throat> one thing I wanted to mention, I didn't announce that earlier, but when I have this card, the mystery card, I've noticed that because it's um, a spiritual connection, so you could either be twin flames, soulmates, karmic partners, maybe a bit more, um, there is a possibility that the cards may resonate more for you as well. So some of you might actually feel that these are your feelings. And that's perfectly fine. That is natural because we do mirror the other person, our person of interest. We can also um, pick up on their energy. So it just kind of comes through us. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that, that some of you may resonate with this as your own. Um, these are your own feelings. All right. So let's have a look at the Lover's Path Tarot to see what obstacles there have been and why. So many of you know, I like to look into the why of things because somebody always leaves. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's, I don't know what it is, but people get into situations and then boom, they get scared. It's too much to handle. So let's have a look. Maybe some of you may know the reason why. Perhaps some of you don't know. This is me exploring that particular reason why there is an issue in this connection currently. Power. Ooh, okay. Subjugation. Somebody feels under someone else's thumb, okay? That's the problem here. And then you have the nine of staffs. Oh yeah, a lot. This could be someone else or um, an organization. I've mentioned this before. Um, if you're working, for example, I've had some clients who work for the military and God bless them. <laughs> um, it's just, I, I, honestly, it's just a, it's like such an honor to be working for somebody that's in the military. It's the coolest thing. Um, my dad was in the military. So we have here power. The problem with this card is, for example, like I'm saying, if you're in the military, you are only stationed at a certain place for a certain amount of time. You cannot, you know, go to your um, superior officer and say, oh, hey, I'm in love with this guy or this girl. Can I please get stationed at that place? <laughs> because I want to be closer to them. It doesn't happen. That's a power. It's an authority. This is something that has come up in that type of a situation also. It doesn't have to specifically mean... Um, an individual because there have been cases where I've done this reading this type of readings and it's as if um, for example a man is living with his parents in the basement apartment and there's certain limitations that he has for example that is power that other people have over him that's what I'm trying to say so this is that type of card that's what this card means um, Okay, and I wanted to just mention, I don't know why I'm being prompted to say this, but when my dad was in the military, he was an officer. So, um, something, somebody told me to say that. Okay. Um, we have here power, and then we have here the nine of staffs. All right. Power. Let's have a look at power. So this does talk about at some point in time, it may have seemed to you, Sag, that this person was a leader. It may have seemed as if they were really responsible and that they had authority. Unfortunately, things went a little downhill. At this point in time and why things started to change for you because they actually felt and they still feel oppressed by another's power and another's authority. For that reason, they are feeling insecure about themselves and this connection. They may have also been towards you passive-aggressive. 
At some point in time, they might have, this might not resonate for everybody, but they might have used their power to manipulate others for their own personal gain. It could be a karma related situation, karmic related situation where somebody may have hurt you and now they are being hurt in return by, but by from, but I can't speak, but by someone else. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, here we also have the nine of staffs. So let's have a look at that. Nine of staffs. I'm also getting a message where the power could also be children. I'm seeing children um, where you have a responsibility to take care of the children during the week or during the uh, weekends and they have more authority over your time. So you can't really dedicate your time to someone else. This is either you or this is them. Um, either way, it's it's a, like it's a responsibility, but you kind of feel obligated to listen to that authority. That's where this is going. All right, we have here the nine of staffs. Either you can listen or the other person's listening um, to that authority figure. All right, nine of staffs. Have that here. Oh, I just said the word responsibility. And here it does say responsibility. We have how back then things may have seemed um, as though this person was very responsible. Unfortunately, now there's a lack of responsibility. And they are feeling extremely overwhelmed by the work that's been given to them because they were given so much that they couldn't handle it, meaning overwhelmed. Um, too much responsibility was given to them. And then it seemed to them that, yes, I could take it, I can take it. But then, no, it did not work out. There's only so much a human being can do, right? It does say here that it's a time for a break. And here it says a denial of responsibilities. Ooh. So there's two issues here, Sagittarius. This person feels that they are under someone else's authority. Could be a spouse, could be a partner. But in addition to that, there's another extra thing. It's like a double whammy. They're feeling overwhelmed and they started to deny the responsibilities altogether. Oh, that's a very terrible uh, combination. You see, if they did not have this authority figure, their behavior further down the road would not have changed. It would not have changed. But because they have this power over them by somebody else or something else, they kind of gave up. They actually gave up on the connection and they felt that it's too much for them to handle because they're dealing with so many other things that they ended up denying the responsibility of having this connection, of having you in their life. Wow. One thing leads to another, right? That's very common, but... Um, that's kind of rare that I read these cards like that, but that's the way these two cards are pulled together. Okay, let's have a look at any actions, any intentions that this person may take towards you. This is the beginner's tarot deck. Hmm, the Fool card. Followed by the Four of Cups. I only pick the top card because it has the most amount of energy. The others are quite a bit. Three of Pentacles. Some of you might be working with this person or maybe you have worked with them in the past. Um, there's love there. Somebody here fell in love with the other. And if you haven't worked with them, then this person does want to manifest something with you. They want to work on this connection together and build uh, a better relationship. Which is exactly why, Sagittarius, in the beginning you had death and rebirth, putting things to death, basically, making them go to sleep and having a rebirth. 
um, of something new, something brand new, which is the relationship. So we have here the Fool card. This person does want to take a leap of faith and join you in your venture in life. Um, the one problem is I would say be careful because this person is very impulsive. They may be quite compulsive. They may be a bit immature. So their actions are not really thought out properly. Very much like a fool. They take action first and think later. The problem with that type of a person that has that kind of mindset, unfortunately, is that they make mistakes a lot and they make them fast and they don't know what to do to correct them. And then they just ghost you. So this person needs time if and when they do, because I see that they do want to come back into your life, you are going to be the one calling the shots. You're going to be the one setting those boundaries. This person needs to start respecting you and appreciating those boundaries. When you have boundaries, people respect you. When you don't, they, they do a lot and then they leave. So let's keep those boundaries. We have here also the Four of Cups. There's genuine hurt that this person feels. They feel like they have missed an opportunity. There was so much that you were giving at the time and they were just like blind sided kind of like they, they did not know what to focus on. And that was a problem. And now they're seeing things in different light. And now they see that, oh my goodness, I really have lost so much so much of this opportunity. Then we have the three of pentacles. I do see that again, either you guys have worked together. If you haven't still, this person's falling in love with you. Yes. Um, I also see that this person's going to want to work with you somehow, find an excuse to be around you or find something common, a common interest. And they also see that you have potential and that there are other people in your life. Um, they want to be somebody that can be special, maybe work on a project uh, together. That's, that's the type of uh, feeling I'm getting with this card right now. We also have judgment. Yes, death and rebirth. This is resurrection, resurrecting something in a much more better way. Um, this is now a new desire, renewed desire to transform and to have a brighter, more transparent connection, more truth, no betrayal, no lies, nothing hidden. This is what this person wants. And they want a second chance. And they, again, this is an angel, right? Um, they want this to come through because they're feeling that this entire connection is now divinely guided. We also have here under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme, we have Queen of Cups. They see you as somebody who they just cannot let go of because they feel unconditional love from you. They see you as the Queen of Cups. Unconditional love, very soft, very nurturing. You know, the, the feminine energy in you, whether you're man or woman, is very um, fulfilling. It's very fulfilling. They feel like they have a lot even though they may materialistically have less, but there's so much abundance when it comes to love, unconditional love, they actually feel that you give them unconditional love. And this is why they want a second chance because they did not see this before. However, they are seeing this now. Well, that's good. So are they going to, you know, take a chance? I do see that. I do see that. But there's a little bit of a warning here be careful that you don't jump into the situation too soon, too fast. Don't do that because this person is already kind of immature in a way where they don't really think things through. I mean, it could be the word immature. It could just be being impulsive. This person's impulsive and hot-headed. I'm getting the word hot-headed. They're compulsive and hot-headed. 
If they don't get their way, they kind of get grumpy. Arrogant, I'm getting the word arrogant. Ignorance? Oh, okay, lots of words are coming. Ignorance. And the word irresponsible. All right. These are Archangel Answer cards. I'm just going to do a quick prayer. Okay. Let's see what Archangels Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel from heaven have to say about this connection. Ooh, it's up to you. They're giving you a choice. They don't think that this is the best thing for you, but they're giving you a choice because you have the will. You're a human being right now, so you do have will. Then you have romance. This is honestly like double confirmation that this is a divinely guided connection because you also had mystery earlier. We have here unlikely. And we have peaceful resolution. Ooh, we have no. Followed by ask your angels under the bottom of the deck. So we have it's up to you, followed by romance. Yes, remain positive. Unlikely, peaceful resolution. No. And then under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme, we have ask your angels. All right. So when I get this card, it's up to you. Usually I see like a two way street. OK, um, well, not a two way street. I don't mean two way street. I mean like passage to crossroads it's a crossroads so you have two choices you do have a choice Sagittarius of being with this person or not being with this person at all on any level so for those of you that wish to be with this person this message is for you this is a spiritually based romantic connection you have had a past life where you may have been married engaged, betrothed, you could have had a long-term affair. This is something that has come from the past life to make things work in this lifetime. But not every time and every lifetime do the stories come out positive. It's not all the time that that happens. And that's because the fact that we live on planet Earth and the devil throws in a monkey wrench and to many of the plans not himself, but he gets others to do it for him. Negative energies. They are saying, yes, it is important to remain positive. It is important to remain positive because those negative energies will stay away from you. If you are positive, you will attract positive energy. However, they are also saying, even though there's romance, it's unlikely going to be the type of connection that you thought it to be. Will there be a peaceful resolution slightly they are saying there's still going to be friction no peaceful resolution no it's unlikely going to be it almost seems as if you might put in the effort and it will be something different maybe this person literally 15 15 percent i'm getting the number 15 maybe this person will only give you 15 percent of their attention and is that, you know, a connection for some people, even that is a lot, especially if you're in love with the guy, right? Or a woman. Um, that's a problem because it's not logical. It's not um, practical, right? What is 15%, right? Um, so honestly, it's still your choice. This is why they're saying it's up to you. We also have here, ask your angels. So this does talk about you communicating with the angels in heaven. The way I do it, and if some of you want to follow that, um, to get to the angels, I pray to the Christ consciousness. That's Christ. From there, in my mind's eye, I pray to his Father, Jehovah, Yahweh. From there, I call upon Archangels Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel with the permission of these two. Jehovah and the Christ consciousness. 
So they work for them. They work for the Abrahamic religion altogether in combination. But when you do that, you can call upon the angels. They do need permission to help you. So it is important to give them permission. And when you ask your angels questions, what kind of answers are you going to get? We will get signs and synchronicities. We will get messages on billboards, in magazines, a poster. You'll see a message on that. You will see or hear somebody speak certain words to you, maybe a complete random stranger that comes up to you and starts talking. I've had that happen. It's the weirdest thing. Um, these are the type of things that can happen when you ask your angels. You do receive answers. The only thing is, Sagittarius, we these days are so busy that we don't reflect on the inside and there's so much noise like noise pollution, right? It's also like rays pollution. There's so much going on that we're not really able to listen to our intuition. But that is something that is important in this particular situation. You have to pay attention to what your heart and mind is telling you. This goes same for the people that just don't want to be with this person. So they are saying, again, it's up to you. Yes, this is a three d romantic connection maybe it was but it has always been a spiritual connection always they still want you to remain positive yes again unlikely it's going to turn out the way that you even thought peaceful resolution it's better not even to get into that and again ask your angels honestly for both of you for both um, parties here the ones that want to be with this person and that don't want to be i would say it's leaning more towards it's a hopeless cause um, and it's because of this person's situation. It seems like they're not going to be able to change their situation anytime soon. And that's a problem. If they are dependent on somebody else and they're not independent, then it's going to be very difficult for them to try to be with you the way that you'd like them to. So there are obstacles here for sure. Um, you know, is there something that may happen in the coming future? Yes, romance can come in the future because you do have the romance card here and they are telling you simply to remain positive. So for all of you, I do see that there is still romance. Yes, remain positive. Could be with this person, could be with someone else. Is there going to be peaceful resolution? You may start off like that. You might end up in an argument or something. But because it's unlikely going to turn out the way that you had thought in your mind. Maybe you had a plan. It's not going to turn out exactly like you thought. And of course, that is a problem. Sagittarius, that is your reading. I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity and some guidance in your situation. On my other channel, Asnoitia Audio... <laughs> which was on pause for quite some time. I didn't upload any videos. I had so much congestion because of a variant that I caught and many of you can hear my voice. I did not clear my voice this time, yay. I didn't have to. Congestion's gone, knock on wood. <laughs> um, so keep in mind that within the next few days, I am gonna be putting up some videos there, uh, maybe just one or two, but it could just be one. But the thing is, I really want to get into relationship advice um, because it's wonderful how I'm able to see from behind the scenes what somebody really is feeling. So my perspective on those types of um, connections are different. I approach it in a different manner. Um, so, you know, support the channel, the other channel as well. That's a Snoinchia Audio. And I will be posting some good videos just to help in regards to relationships. And this is all through personally, my own experience. Second, biggest example, all of the people that I've done readings for, everybody. Um, I've noticed trends and patterns. And so I was able to um, see certain things that, you know, we just don't see in everyday life and people don't discuss these things. Um, it's very good. It's going to be very in-depth. So look forward to that. And once again, thank you for tuning in and supporting this channel as well and my work. I will see you guys again. Take care. Bye now.